How are you? This is Oliver Fernandez with The Imperfect Entrepreneur, and you know your business is heading in the right direction when your high-performing team members are saying, hey, Oliver, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about today on the podcast. So my daughter Liliana is two years and three months right now. My son is three months. And when he was first born, it was all this love towards brother. And now we're starting to get into a little children or sibling rivalry. And there's been some scratching going on. And we're working through it. But it's just another challenge as a parent that you got to work through. You can't just avoid or ignore um, but you got to continue to push through it and, and make and find ways t- so that my daughter can still feel secure in her new role as big sister and my son can be safe in our house. So got a couple calls yesterday from my team members. These are high performing team members and they were like, hey, Oliver, dude, I'm overwhelmed. I'm concerned. And I honestly, in the moment, it's like, oh crap, are we doing stuff right? But in that exact second, it's like, no, we are. This is exactly where we want to be. We want our team to be overwhelmed. We want our team to have too much on their plate. Because what's the opposite of it? Not having enough on your plate, right? Not hitting our goals, not hitting our targets. And the only way you hit your targets is by having so much on your plate that the small things that were distractions before now get pushed to the wayside because they have to. They have to because there's so many other bigger things that are happening in the organization that are moving you toward the ideal picture of where you want your organization to go. So I love that overwhelm. And I love also having the security that I know these team members are going to work through it. And the reason why I know that they're going to work through it is because me as a leader has grown. I have grown as a leader, so now I can explain to them, like, everything that you want is up that hill. Everything that you want is going to have overwhelm all across it. Everything that you desire in your life, personally, professionally, and financially, is going to be chaos, And we have to just get used to being in that chaos mode so that we can go and build what we want to build. And then honestly, as we continue to build and get to that point and can prove that result, then that's when we put the team and the support around that, 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 that system to keep it moving forward in an orderly fashion. But like in the beginning, it is going to be overwhelmed. In the beginning, it is going to be crazy. In the beginning, there is going to be chaos. And like anybody who tells you it isn't going to be chaos has never built anything big because everything is chaos in the beginning. Like well, that's one of the things that I love most about Grant Cardone is like he, he, he mentioned like, hey, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And if you're trying to go, do something big, you're going to bleed along the way. And it's like you think when when Michael Jordan went and won all those back-to-back championships. Do you think he had, didn't have to work through any injuries? Do you think that he didn't have to bleed? Do you think that he didn't have to work through challenges? There was challenges all throughout his journey there. And that's what we as entrepreneurs need to remind ourselves of, that like it's not going to be perfect. And when we're going big and when we're doing big things, we are going to bleed a little bit. We're going to get scratches and bumps and bruises. There is going to be chaos. There's going to feel, be this feeling of overwhelm. But as we continue to handle that feeling of overwhelm and continue to work through it to get to our best version of the organization and the best version of our team, the best version of ourselves, we continue to work through that overwhelm, then we can actually start to create what we want to create in life. So like, I got that, I got those, I got those calls and my first, my first partner was overwhelmed. We were looking at a couple different other business acquisitions and he thought we were going to, you know, buy all of those acquisitions. And it's like, no, but we have to be out there in the marketplace, understanding what's being presented in the marketplace. And then if people can't, uh, if they, if the organizations that we're looking to purchase aren't a good fit for us, then like, we're not going to purchase them, but we have to continue to go out there and look and, and, and see what we like and see what we don't like. Right. And that's how we get even clearer on what we do like. 
And then we have to look at those organizations that might be, you know, 10 or 15 minutes away from us and say, okay, maybe we might not keep that location, but how can we give an offer that's compelling enough to that seller while also flowing all of that new traffic to our, our existing location, to our existing team? And, and those are the, those are overwhelming conversations. It's like my plate is already full and now we're getting dumped on by another, an, another plate is being dumped on it and, it and it is overwhelming. But if we don't ever take those steps and do the due diligence and understand what's out there in the marketplace, we're never gonna, we're never gonna have a clear picture of what we have currently as an organization, what we're doing well and what we can improve on and how we can add value and honestly take that value that's already in the marketplace and, and merge it and seamlessly merge it into our existing organization. So I, that, I'm, I'm good comforting my team in that, those moments of overwhelm because I've grown as a, as a leader. I've understand that everything that I've created in my life, I was always overwhelmed about in the beginning. And those moments of overwhelm have only helped me get to where I want to get, get where I'm at right now, but it's also going to be the catalyst to helping me get to where I want to go. I remember another feeling of overwhelm where I was bidding on this project and it was like, a, it ended up being like a one and a half million dollar job. And one of my team members was saying the exact same thing. Oh, oh, this is too big of a project. This is really overwhelming. I don't think we should go after it. That job we made half a million dollars on. Like, what was wrong with that? There was nothing bad about that. Yes, was it something that we've never done before? Yes. Was there some feelings of overwhelm? Yes. But if we didn't push through those feelings of overwhelm, we never would have gotten that result of a half a million dollars on a project that took less than you know, a year to complete. So I thought that was pretty amazing, right? And that's why I now have the confidence as a leader to tell my team and to instruct my team and to lead my team and to influence my team and just say, we're on the right path. We're on the right path. We're going up that hill. Of course it's struggle. Any hill, have you ever walked any hill? Like it's never been easy. It's always going to be struggle. You're going to be sweating. There's, your bones are going to start to hurt. All of those things are going to come into play. But once we get to the top of that hill and see that view of what we've created and what we've walked up, it's that's the point that's amazing. That's the point that we're so proud that we continue to push through that pain. So I have my other team member. We're, we're going after all of these projects and, you know, our pipeline is full. <laughs> it's it, I'm excited to finally say that you know for a while our pipeline wasn't wasn't as full as it is now and but now it is full, and there's a feeling of overwhelm. Like there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of moving pieces, right? We're pressure testing the organization. We're seeing what people can handle, how how people can execute, right? So that's that's a good thing, and then number two, it's like. We had to prove the result. Like we had to make sure that this worked before we started scaling and bringing other team members on. Because we don't wanna all of a sudden have 10 team members and this the system that we created doesn't work. But now that we've proven that this new bidding process, it, it works and how to get results with it, now we can add team members to it and confidently believe that we're gonna get business from it, we're going to get growth from it, we're gonna get opportunities from it. So that, that team member is like, Oliver, we're, we're getting all these projects. I, I'm, we're going to need some help. But yeah, I'm like, great. Yeah, I want to find help. I want that team members. I want to add team members to the team. And the reason why I want to add team members to the team is because we've actually created the result. Now we have the revenue. We have the projects. Like this is the time to bring team members. And that brings me to my second part about that is that when you're bringing on team members, I don't want to just be bringing on any team member. So I had to let my team member know like, I want to bring on a high performer because right now the organization doesn't have the capacity to handle someone that's a, a two or a three and we got to babysit every every everything that's going on with that person and we got to teach them all these like these these basics that they should already have a, a full understanding of. Like I want to bring on a seven or a six or a seven where we could teach them our concepts and our frameworks 
to get them to a nine. But like, the same work is gonna have to be brought in, but like that person's then gonna be able to execute at an extremely high level. Whereas if we bring in a two or a three, it's gonna be a babysitting job. And honestly, we don't have the time, we don't have the energy, we don't have the, the capacity in the organization right now to be babysitting people on fundamentals that they honestly need to get sharpened so that they can come to the marketplace and add true value. Like, I could, uh, these huge organizations that are thousands and hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of people deep, yeah, they have the infrastructure to train people on how to use Microsoft Word and Excel and all. Like, us as an organization, we don't have the capacity to do that right now. Like, who's going to train you how to do Microsoft Word or Excel? Me? My superintendents that are working 24, you know, working in the hard in the field? My team members that are, are working hard putting together projects and proposals? Like, no, we don't have the capacity to put together and train somebody on how to use Microsoft Excel. What we do have the capacity to do is someone that already knows how to use Excel, we can teach them our methods of, of working with Excel, our processes for working with Excel, our systems that include Excel. That's what we can do. But teaching somebody how to use a basic formula in Excel and how to sum lines and how to, like we can't, we don't have time in the organization to, to go to that granular of a level. And honestly, if the, if, if the people in the organization that are, want to come to our organization and they don't want to take time to get their skills sharpened so that they can present a better product to the marketplace, then we're already out of alignment. Because I know if they're not going to work on their own goals, then like, it's going to be a babysitting job for us to get them to at least take some action on, on, on the things that we need them to take action on. So I told, I reinforced to that team member, like, I am super excited to bring on new team members. I am, I, it is my intention to, to, to provide support for you. You've created a result in, we are going to get those new team members, but we're not going to bring in team members that are going to drag us backwards and be a distraction for us. And we are going to bring team members that are going to add value and be able to help and complement what we're already doing. And at the same time, that person's going to be reporting to you. So you're going to have to grow as a leader. And I, in that moment, that person, I've been talking about this for over a year and, and it's, it's like finally coming into fruition. And it's like that person accepted it. She now sees like, oh wow, now I do need that person. I do, I am gonna have this person working directly underneath me, handling all of the organization things that I need to, that I've been currently doing that are now taking up too much time and I need to focus on the higher level things, right? But like, you don't have those realizations in the organization unless you create results people are overwhelmed and there can be actual growth that can happen in the organization because that moment of that moment would have never been the same or she wouldn't have had the same understanding if she wasn't overwhelmed but because she is overwhelmed she now can see how that next person is going to fit into the organization it's not a threat to her anymore and I don't think it ever was a threat, but it's it's 100% not a threat now because that person is, is, is in need. Like we do need that person. And there's, there is results that can be re achieved by that person and we already have the blueprint to achieve those results. And that's, that's, that's the story of life. Like you want to first model mimic master, right? Like, it's, it goes in every area of life. Like me as an owner, I'm looking at finding models to mimic a master. Then my team members are finding models to mimic a master. And then as they become, as, as they continue to model mimic master after what we've already created in the organization, when we bring new team members to the, to the, to the team, they're now modeling, mimicking, mastering after our other high performers. So it's, it's always finding the, what the model, what you want in life, mimicking that model, 
so that you can start creating the results of that model and then mastering that model. And then once you master that model, you can create the life you've always dreamed of, the, the life that you've always thought of, and the life that you, that you inspire to go after every single day. And with that, you go out there and continue to build your legacy because it's gonna take day after day work. It's gonna take moment after moment energy. It's gonna take, it's gonna take that desire to be great. But it's so possible and I can't wait to hear your stories about what you create in life. Let's roll, baby.